Welcome to the Romance Podcast, and man, what a difference a couple weeks makes because if you checked out our last episode, you know about my travel nightmare that I went through. I'm not going to go into it again. It was the travel weekend from hell for me and my son. Uh, it worked out because we made it to, to Kenzie for her family reunion, but it was a travel nightmare. And again, mm. last episode, we go through everything. I mean, it was it was the weekend from hell, but we have an update. Yes. United actually took really good care of, of me and indirectly my son because yeah. they I reached out, I complained, you know, whatever, whatever. They said, go to this website, uh, united.com slash feedback. And I want to say what, one of the things that we want to take care of is that because they delayed and delayed and delayed instead of just canceling early, we had to pay an insane fee for like a rental car. Right. And legally, when they do things like this and it's their fault, uh, because this was like their technology that failed, they were working through the issue. So we wanted to get reimbursed for that car because the car was obviously also abnormally high. It was about yeah. $300. And I'm yeah. like, we should not be paying for that. So <laughs> we <laughs> bless you. <laughs> really funny aside, before we started this podcast, before I hit record, Kenzie sneezed seven times in a row. Yeah. I've never heard you sneeze so many times in my life in a row. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, babe, are you okay? Go put some water on your face, right? Seven times in a row. And she came back and she's fine. And now I just sneezed on the podcast. This room must be dusty as hell. We have some issues in here, I think. We got to get back to every week. Apparently. Apparently. <laughs> so anyways. Anyways. Um, we really, so that's kind of like what the, the quote unquote complaint was or what we were submitting to United. So we wanted a refund for our flights. Obviously, we shouldn't pay for them. We didn't get to have them. Right. And then we wanted just that car paid for. So yes. that's what we were looking for just a reimbursement on that so again united.com slash feedback i go submit my story you mm -hmm. know and whatever whatever uh i get an email back about three days later and they say you know we're so so sorry i mean very very nice email we're so sorry you know yada yada we try to strive for the best customer all this stuff yeah and they say not only are you getting your flights uh refunded obviously of course um and any taxes and anything but we're also going to give you a 400 dollar travel voucher through united so i go to kenzie I go oh my god awesome they're taking care of it they give us 400 bucks right you know kind of the, the price of the rental car it's all good right and i'm like i guess that makes sense they don't want to give out cash so they give like flight flight credit yeah whatever Which, we fly united yeah. we do so i'm like whatever we'll use it i go back and reread the email and i'm like wait because me and Tristan, my son, were on the reservation together. Yes. The email reads that each of us are getting $400 travel credit through United. So it's 800 hours we're getting credit on flights in United. So I go back to Kenzie and go, babe, this is awesome. $800 we're getting for our and troubles. I'm, I'm like, wow, that's really nice of them. So now they're just kind of like here's your refund. And then here's a flight for both of you basically taken care of yeah. because of the experience. And I'm like, you know what? That's obviously more than the Renzo car. I'll take it. More than double, actually. Yes, exactly. So fine. In the email, though, they asked for my address. And I, I really didn't understand why, but I gave it to them. Like, whatever. Here's my address. So I look on the app. I have the 800-hour flight credits in my app. So it's there. We got awesome it. Awesome sauce. They respond to my address email and they said, we're also going to send a full reimbursement for the rental car that you guys did. So ultimately, United gave us over $1,000 for our troubles uh, a couple weeks ago. Yeah. No, it was really nice. <laughs> I made a so $1,000 on this deal. So listen, listen. <laughs> I want you to keep in mind, all he did is go online and submit one form. <laughs> one form, yeah. So let's talk for a second because <laughs> I start getting mad. And he's like, why are you mad? And because this is classic Roman, horseshoe up his ass Roman is what I like to call him. It's just like everything works out. It works out flawlessly. It works out for the best. It works out better than his best case scenario typically that's yeah. not how my life goes mm -hmm. i'm looking for the bare minimum and does it meet it no okay <laughs> so several what do you mean ago, what do you oh, mean what do i mean because i also had a horrible flight experience very recently yes so i was supposed to fly to new york for one day i was flying in in the morning and out in the evening to go to one of my best friends engagement parties i couldn't wait to support her yeah. i get to the airport and i had to get to the airport early because mama's still pumping, okay? Yeah. So I have to like pack a pump, pa have the breast milk that I pumped, that has to get tested separately. I have to find out, I have to wait in the airport for one of the mama pods to open up so I can go pump. I mean, it it's not like we were not, you know, this is not a first class experience that I'm having. <laughs> so while I'm in my pod pumping, my flight gets delayed. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. 
It's all good. Then it gets delayed again. And I'm like, okay. Now it's because of uh, weather in New York, right? No, not weather. It was because of short staffed air traffic That's control right. yeah. in New York. So it wasn't airline specific. It was like traffic control They're in New York. They're not letting people land. Yeah. So all the flights have to get pushed back. Yeah. And I'm like, neat. So then I get on the plane. I'm still going to land in enough time to go to this thing. Now, mind mm-hmm. you, I have to land in New York City. I have to get ready at the airport. Then I have to get an Uber to the venue, which it's New York City. So we know it's going to take a hot minute. Okay. Yeah. I tend to get back early enough with my pump accessories because you have to go through extra screening so yeah. i'm like okay we still have time like and at this point i'm like i'm gonna go to the engagement party for about an hour and a half right. i wanted to do it for my friend though i wanted to be there i'm down yeah. okay get on the flight they then they push the flight back once we're already boarded uh-huh. several hours <laughs> and i go i am going to if this happens if i can't get off this plane if they don't let me i will land in new york and I will just get on my flight to come home. Right. That's what's going to happen. Right. Now, as this is happening, my flight there was United. My flight back was Spirit. Yeah. Spirit pushes theirs back an hour and a half. And I'm like, I'm going to get stuck in the New York airport. And we had you on like the final flight yes. back to Chicago on so Spirit. So I'm nervous that one, it's going to get canceled completely. Right. Once I don't know how bad this delay is going to be because this is early in the day. I'm flying mm-hmm. United. And then two... I also don't want to be landing like one in the morning and I couldn't even go see anybody. I don't want to hang out at the airport now for like over 13 hour plus total and never go anywhere. So I beg and plead. I get off the flight. They cancel it. I immediately in that moment. So I don't know, 10 hours before my flight that evening now contact spirit. And I'm like, Hey, the delay is an hour and a half. It's not going to work for me. The air traffic control things messed it all up. I'm not even going to New York. I would like to cancel this flight and get a refund. Yeah. Um, the first person just stopped responding to me after I waited and keep stopped. <laughs> like the, and then I'm like, hello. And then it re puts you back in the queue and I'm like lit. Okay. Next person was actually pretty helpful. And she was like, I'll give you a credit. I'll give you this. You can only get a refund if it hits this amount of time. And I go, well, it's already, it's already hit an hour and a half. It's probably going to hit two hours. Like, wouldn't you say and she stopped responding to me and then I got put back in a queue when I, re- I texted oh. like another hour later and I'm like, hello, I asked you a question. She put me back in queue. So then the next person's like, you're too late. It's too close to the flight. And I go, I'm not too late. I lost my mind on this person. You I go, crazy, yeah. you guys, I keep ending all my conversations. Mm-hmm. I wasn't too, I've been, I've been having this conversation for 10 hours. It's not too late. Okay. So like, and they were like, they're very snippy snappy. They were not happy with me, but I was sending, I had sent screenshots of all these conversations. Mm -hmm. So like screenshot, 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 whatever. So I'm sending all of it and they go, I'm going to send this to upper management. You'll hear back in three to five days. Two weeks later, no one contacted (laughs) me still. So I submit the whole thing, all the complaints, the delays, everything to spirit. They just immediately mess me back. Like no, not eligible for refund. I'm like, are you looking, you're not looking at anything. So then I call them and I wait on the phone for over two hours on hold. Um, and it just hangs up uh, after <laughs> waiting for two hours. So then I um, I went into the queue again. I'm like, we're just going to do the live chat thing because waiting on the phone, it's just too much. At least I can hop back on the live mm-hmm. chat. I'll just yeah. keep trying it this way. I entered the queue Sunday night and they said, your estimated wait time is 25 minutes. They messaged me back during the morning show around 9 a.m. the next day. Yeah, they, they, so uh, about 10 hours later, it's been a process. So I'm like, okay, so no, no, it's not done. So uh, <laughs> no, 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 not the process is not over. So then I start going back and with force with that person and they go, your flight was never delayed. I go, it absolutely was. And I sent a screenshot because I also took a screenshot of my yeah, delay time because yeah. I'm not playing with these people. I have right. screenshots of everything. I know to show up with receipts. I've been cheated on enough of my life. So I sent not a screenshot. by me, by the way, not by me. But I'm watching you, though. Yeah. So I sent a screenshot of my delay. They end the conversation. I end up back in queue. I'm like, I'm going to punch through the phone. So I do it again. I wait for over seven hours for someone to wait for me for live chat. So this morning, I'm going back and forth with somebody. And I try to not even make it about the delayed flight. I go, I've been getting really bad customer service. And I'm writing everything. And I go, I couldn't even go on my trip because of the delays. I was not there. I want a refund. But the worst thing has been 
I don't know, the four weeks now I've been contact. Yeah, like when four was this? Weeks. When was your New York trip? This was in June. It was in June. This is in June. Yeah, and now and I, the last message I sent was today. Yeah, we're in early August. And it August. got escalated to upper management, and I go. I, okay, so this happened once and no one contacted me. They go, someone will for sure contact you. I go, but no one did before. Uh, and I go, am I allowed to get a case number or a different thing that I can follow up with? Like, is there an upper management where I can send the case number and check on it? And no is the answer. So you can't do that. So the funny thing about that situation is, but again, you, you took United to New York or you're supposed to at least United yes. to New York and spirit back. Uh, by the time you got back from the airport that day, United had already refunded our flights. You were good. And you were so mad at me because I did it. And you're like, I've been dealing with spirit. Da, da, da. You're not, of course, for you, it was easy. Because it was. It was like, but like, look at our life. He's in one thing. And he's like, I didn't need all this, you guys. They gave us over a thousand dollars. so kind. And I'm like, hey, guys, you delayed my flight so much. I just can't go anymore. Could I please have my money back? And they want me to die. <laughs> that is Spirit's oh opinion. You know, um, this reminds me of something. I'm sorry, by the way. I'm sorry you're going through you're this right not. now. You're not. Look at you. No, because like, I'm sorry. because. Uh, how about you take this over? It wasn't my flight. <laughs> it wasn't my flight. My my itinerary has been uh, uh, compensated heavily, and I'm very happy with the result. I am your <laughs> wife. <laughs> I want to punch you in the face. One more example of kind of like uh, messing up forward okay um was i have no examples so don't worry this won't take long <laughs> is don't not, worry it's not funny i actually got a, a really bad car accident back in 2017 i had an infinity um and actually i just put the money down for my new tesla right so so in 2017 i was like my last like couple weeks of like my infinity and i was about to get my new car i was very very excited i never like infinities are nice cars but like for me a tesla was like oh my gosh i'm i'm gonna splurge a little bit and give me like this like dream car right so i was very excited to get this car well it was like the last uh couple weeks of me having my old car and i was driving on 90 in chicago and i got off on ogden and it was snowing and icy and if you anybody knows who ogden it kind of makes like a sharp right turn and so i i guess i was going too fast and i hit it and literally i could not stop and i smashed into some other car a parked car by the way parked car nobody got hurt i wasn't hurt how but- mad this this would be my life i'd be the parked car <laughs> you would i just want you to say you would be- this is him i am the parked car <laughs> oh my god I was like, you don't even understand. And I would come outside and end. I was so scared. I'd never been in an accident in my entire life. Okay. Ever, mm-hmm. ever. Well, anyways, I was selling my car to CarMax. All right. You, you kind of bring it in. They look at everything and they're like, okay, we'll give you X amount of dollars. I forget the numbers. Okay. Let's just say they're offering me $15,000 for my old car. I, I really don't know the number, but let's just say it was that. Okay. So I have this number in my head. This is what I'm going to accept because of whatever CarMax will buy it for this. But... I total my car as I got in this car accident. So now the insurance adjusters are like looking at everything. They kind of come spe- uh, look at my car and everything. And they're like, you know, we got to total this car out. Like we have to like total it out. So we're going to reimburse you for the entire car. And they had literally like the, the number they were going to give me was like ten or $15,000 over what I was probably going to accept from CarMax. So it was a horrible accident. I, I really wish I wasn't in it. But like at the end of the day, I kind of made out better. Again, this car. I would be the part <laughs> car who probably had to spend how much on their deductible. <laughs> it's sick. It's I don't know what's going on, but it's sick. And I... I have. I'm sorry. Listen, I'm sorry. <laughs> I I believe in God and I trust His path, but boy, do I have some questions about you. Oh my gosh. Well, you know, I, but you're but now you're part of this family. I'm not family. part of it you because are. look at me dealing with spirit. I'm not part of it. I am not benefiting. I want to make it very clear. I'm crying right because now because you're. It's a joke. <laughs> it's a sick joke. All right. Enough about my luck and about it your. Makes me so- about your- I'm crying because I hate my life. It was like a different. You're filled with joy. I have tears of joy, and you have tears I'm of like, sorrow. I'm just upset. All right. Well, let's talk about something that made us both very, very happy. Uh, last week, uh, before Lollapalooza uh, kicked off, you surprised me with a Lollapalooza pre-show of an artist that I love, Megan Maroney, country artist Megan Maroney. Mm-hmm. And here's the deal. She was performing at Lollapalooza on Friday. Mm-hmm. You were working for Q101 at Lollapalooza. And you asked me if I wanted to have someone watch the baby and come on down and watch Megan Maroney at Lollapalooza. And I said, yes. honestly, that would be awesome. But like, we have this newborn baby and he's been a bit difficult 
kind of hard to have somebody watch him an entire day. I'm well, not, that's the thing. Is I'm that not going to do it. For you to legitimately get to like, she was on during basically rush hour. I want to say her yeah. performance was around 545. Yeah. So you'd been driving down like in the heat of it on a Friday. So you're yeah. looking at over two hours yeah. to get to the heart, like to get to Lala. Someone would have to watch Marino walk. like the entire day. It probably would have taken you three hours to truly get to the stage at Lala. You yeah. look at it over a two hour drive, park, walk through. Yeah. So you're looking at that for less than an hour performance or maybe she did one. I want to say it was like a 45 minute performance probably, at yeah. Lala. It yeah. was shorter. So it was like 45 minutes. Then to get back, it was like the babysitter would have been like six hours of travel yeah. and then 45 minute performance. So, so I said, thanks for the offer, but like, you know, and honestly I do like Megan Maroney a lot. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, my favorite artist of all time is Michael Jackson. Not like I'm seeing Michael Jackson, you right. know, at Soldier so, Field or something, you know, a so. little backstory is like, I have to, I obviously this summer Q1 is just popping in the summer. We have like tons of events, tons of things to do. And Lollapalooza, of course, is no exception to that. We had tons of coverage. So I had the morning show in the morning, obviously. Mm -hmm. Then we headed over to Lollapalooza. And we handled a lot of the daytime coverage like because we could be on site super early, like right when it opened, following the morning show. I hosted the Will Dorado pop-up. So I was very busy, and I wasn't really making it home because of our drive. Yeah. There may be people out there who's like, oh, she left Lala at this time. Yep, so it wasn't home till nighttime because it we took live, over two hours We live about time. 44 miles uh, west of Chicago. So we're in the suburbs of and it's it's not an easy now, commute the later you get traffic. in the day the longer that takes let me tell yeah. you something Lollapalooza added two two heaping scoops onto that so it was about two, two out heaping scoops of like ass okay <laughs> two so, heaping know, scoops of ass that's because that's my life <laughs> i'm sure you would have gotten a police escort somehow <laughs> if you were working that's how it worked for me yeah. so it was about two hours home both days mm -hmm. is what it took so it was, it was a very very long day but it was also a lot of me not with the baby and yeah. I have the mom guilt. I have wife guilt. I had all that. And on top of it, of course, pre-baby, you definitely would have joined me at some yeah. of these performances. And for, so I also felt guilty because like, well, I'm at work, but I'm at Lollapalooza. Mm -hmm. You know, you're having these longer days. So I asked about the Megan Maroney because I didn't want to leave you out. I'm like, hey, one of your favorite new country artists is going to be there. And I was super into it, but I was like, you know, it's just, it's, it's more work than what the payoff would be. So yeah. thank you for the offer, but I, I should probably stay home with the baby and then we don't have to find someone to babysit and it's all good. You got to yeah. work. I'll be home with the baby. It'd have been two cars on the way home. It would have been a whole thing. <laughs> yeah. So I totally get it. Now, I found out by, out of all the artists at Lalo, there's no, only a few. I found out. Remember I told you, I go, oh, oh that's right. Megan Maroney's performing at the House of Blues before, the night before she goes on La Palooza. Right. Which House of shocked. Blues, if you're not from Chicago, House of Blues is like an awesome, awesome venue. That's my venue. favorite venue in Chicago, it's without a, question. It's it a is. great venue to watch a concert at. Weird flex for me. I've performed there a bunch of times in my music career. Mm -hmm. Great uh, venue to perform at. The acoustics are awesome. So to see Megan Maroney at the House of Blues, that is something for I like would be into. like a full hour set, probably. Yeah. longer than her actual la la set yeah. like all of it so it's really cool so i was like gosh i wonder if i can get tickets to that because that's that's fun and then i knew personally um i actually asked my cousin to come over because i'm like you know what we can put the baby to sleep yeah. and then leave because it's a la la after show so this doesn't even start like at normal concert times right. so I, spent, I knew nothing i knew nothing you did not know i spent a lot of time trying to find these tickets and i knocked on a couple doors that were that were not answered. They were shut. Yeah, they were, they were like, <laughs> bitch, everyone wants to go. Yeah. So this was... Because she's, she's a big country artist. Or she's yeah. Up and she's coming. She's kind of like had like this... Like lately, I feel like she's had that yes. spring up lately. So she, uh, if, by the way, if you, if you like country music, check her out. She's really, really good. Yeah. Uh, her second album just recently came out and it's it's a, it's going to be a monster. Uh, her first album was really, really good. This is the next album. I, th I think that she's definitely trending like this. So my point is, is that Megan Maroney at the House of Blues it was a very hot ticket. Absolutely. Because yeah. there's definitely country fans who aren't interested in going to Lollapalooza. Like me. And this is like right. what you want to see. So absolutely. So I spent a while getting getting these tickets um finally got a pair and i'm talking down to the wire got a pair because yeah. i'm like who else can i ask like you I was told thinking, me the night before we were going yes <laughs> so i come downstairs and the one thing that i always say to justin usually when we're gonna enter conversation he's not interested in it, is hey i need to talk to you yeah oh maybe other guys can can <laughs> relate when your girl is like hey i need to talk to you i a part of me inside dies <laughs> because i'm like oh like a, what did I do? B, what do you want to do? <laughs> C, like, how did I mess up? Like, it's just, it's never, normally, hey, I got to talk to you isn't like a, I'm taking you to Megan Maroney. It's more like, why are you following this girl on Instagram? Okay. And then it's like a whole thing, you know? So like, I walked downstairs yeah. and 
I was I was slammed getting ready. I'm packing because here's the thing. I got to go into the morning show and have all that. And I, do, I don't get to like come home, refresh, get ready. I have to bring everything. I'm like living out of a suitcase basically when I do these things. Yeah. I can't make it home and make it back. So I have to think of everything, my outfits for this, my outfits for that, makeup, hair stuff, what I'm doing for the morning show because we're in the middle of Q Olympics. So I'm like, I'm running, I'm doing sprints that day. So I have to wear tennis shoes here, but I want to wear heels. Like I'd yeah. have a lot of stuff packed up to do this. You got a lot going on. You do. It's, it's, a, it's super stressful. And me. by the way, she's a full-time mom and we have yes. a new baby. Yes. Did we say newborn? He'll be he's s- not a newborn, but he's new to me, All damn right. it. I don't care. He's, he's, <laughs> he's going to be six months this week. So I know. And I'm like, he's new... AF. Yeah. I don't he's, care. He's your newborn. Yes. So like <laughs> I get it. He's not like six weeks old, but like he still hasn't grasped the concept of life or yeah, anything. He's still not getting it. He's not, he's getting, not getting it. it. He's not catching up. <laughs> We're doing our best. <laughs> so anyways, um, I, I, so. A lot going on. You're I busy. I was a lot going on. So I walked downstairs and it, he knew I was doing all this the night before trying to get prepped. And I go, I need to talk to you about tomorrow. And, I'm like, oh. and he goes, <gasps> <laughs> and I go, so tomorrow night. <laughs> it's your schlubby face. I'm like, we are going to see Megan Maroney at the House of Blues. He's like, shut up. Yeah. No, we're not. And I'm like, yeah. And he goes, like, what about the kids? And I'm like, it's all worked out. Yeah. They're already going to be in bed. We don't have to leave till after nine because doors were at 10. Yeah. And I'm like, listen, this, not a heavy traffic time. So we can get to the House of Blues in an hour. Yeah. And I didn't care if we walked into 10 or 5 or something because I wasn't worried about it. So we were leaving at nine. I was so kids in bed. surprised. Uh, actually, my uh, Tristan wasn't even going to be here yes. because he was with his mom for the weekend, kind of an extended weekend. Mm-hmm. So really all we had was Marino and you already worked it out with your cousin to come over when, when Marino was sleeping the whole time. Yeah, so she, I was like, listen, pull up Netflix, enjoy yourself. Yep. If he wakes up, I mean, good luck. But we'll yeah. beyond that. <laughs> so we did find out. So first of all, it was an awesome surprise. Uh, I have turned down a lot of things. We have turned down a lot of things uh, because of our baby and because of like, oh, it's hard to get a babysitter. But yeah. I, so He's like, just not at that age yet. I think when the age hits where you get a little bit more comfortable, they're yeah. a little bit more verbal. They can walk a little. They yeah. can do that. Once they get like a tiny bit, he's getting there. He's yeah. almost there where it's just like a smidgen He's easier. almost 18. Shut and I up. feel like at that point. No, but like, you know, in Kenzie and Roman, we're very much, uh, we do a lot of events. We're very much in the in, in Chicago's public eye, if you will. We have had to take a couple steps back from those joint events because of our baby, which again, blessing all the way, but like it's definitely kind of like, okay. And it's a small step back. It's not like we're doing yeah. this forever. It's just once he's slightly more, like babies are so regimented with what you have to do and what they have to mm-hmm. eat and what that, once it gets like a little easier where it's so much simpler for someone to come over or if we can make the event late and we can handle yeah. all that and put him in bed. So, That's kind of our God set right now. So I had, and I would say no to this uh, concert, but you had already worked it out. Everything was set. I was like, too bad. All we're right, going. Let's go. Too let's bad. do it. And I was really excited because I, I did want to see her really bad live, especially at the House of Blues. So I was very excited. It was a really cool surprise. I really appreciate you doing that. Um, doors open up at 10 yes. on Thursday night. So ultimately- And I was kind of guessing doors at 10. I was assuming she'd be on in the 11 zone. 10, 30, 11 maybe? Yeah, 10, 30, 11. I was like, you know, I, I mean, I, I gave her an hour. I'm like, Dora's at 10. I give her a solid hour. Even if she has a 30-minute opener at yeah. 10, 30 to 11. And I'm like, so we'll be out by midnight and home by 1. And I was like, I could sleep for like two or three hours. So I texted a couple because, you know, I'm I'm still kind of in the know. I used to work at US 99, B96. I'm texting some people and I'm like, hey, any idea what time Megan Maroney goes on stage? And nobody knew. Nobody had the information. Nobody told. Because had we known she'd be on at 11, we get there at 1045. Had we known it was 1130, we get there probably at 11, right? So we're like, right. let's just go at 10 and have a couple drinks and like hang out. And, 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 and I know you were funny because I was like, because I could get a little, I could like take a longer nap. You're like, you know, we have a babysitter. Let's just go. Yeah. Let's just go get drinks. Let's get just out go of this fun. house. Like, Amen. honestly, like here's the deal. At this stage of our life right now, in this era I'm in this house way too much. I'm like, let's get the out. Yeah, we have a babysitter. It's covered. Yeah, so let's just go. Doors open at 10. And boy, did we have fun in the foundation room at the House of Blues. We turned up. They give us these wristbands. We go to the foundation room. Really cool, like, loungy area above the House of Blues. And we just have drinks, whatever. But then we find out that Mega Maroney hits the stage at 12.15 a.m. Mind you, I thought we would be leaving at 12. (laughs) She goes on at 12. For a full hour. 15. For a full hour. Yeah. So we, that means obviously show till 1.15. Yep. That means an hour home, 2.15. Mm-hmm. I crawled into our bed at 2.35. I clocked it. 
And your alarm went off at 4.15, I want to say we did. Well, uh, earlier than that, baby. I had a lot to get ready for for Lollapalooza. Yeah. Uh, so. It was, uh, <laughs> I got less than an hour and a half. And mind you, you it wasn't like, okay, I can power. It was the radio show and then Lollapalooza coverage. Yeah. After a radio show, Lollapalooza, Will Dorado pop up, come home, make it to the after show, come home. So let me say this. The surprise was awesome. <laughs> we had a great time. I mean, we, we, we really had a good time. We needed that. You know, we don't really get to do like mom and dad stuff without the kids very much these days. So yeah. that was really fun to do. I am not a big drinker at all. I had myself a Moscow mule. Period. You drink wine normally, but you had a couple of the margaritas. What were they? No. Um. Yeah. Like, like, like Palomas and stuff like that. Yeah. I was having tequila. Period. You were, you were a bit tipsy. I'm not going to lie. You got... Stop. Yeah, you got, you got a little tipsy. I was I was dressed up. There was not a single child. We have yeah. more than one. There yeah. was no child. I normally, if I'm out, this is the only thing I've done the last. He's six months today. Actually, he's six Aww, months. Aww. Happy and birthday. um, happy birthday. That's a big one. It's, it's a big really one. still emotional. For six months, I have been. I either do something for my family, so like wife genre, but mainly parent genre. And work. Mm -hmm. So if I'm out of the house, it's for work. Like, that's that's it. It's work. So to be in an event that I wasn't working mm -hmm. was all... I have not done that. Like, I've gone to stuff, but you're working, you're interacting, uh, you're hosting, you're staging out, whatever it is. So it's like, hell yes, I was drinking. I was sitting there, minding my business, drinking. Well, we had like, a room. We had like two hours to kill at the foundation room. So we're like... We oh, sure <laughs> F did. <laughs> there was a DJ up there. He was rocking some uh, some good songs. And it we're was like, so fun. It was cool. We had we had a lot of fun. Uh, Megan we Maroney, joked about running away. We're just trying yeah. to like Mexico I right know, now. <laughs> uh, Megan Maroney was awesome. I thought it was a great, great set. She sounded it, great. It was very um, fun. It was an awesome show. And the ride home, you you did get to go to sleep in the ride home. Yeah, I did I not fall asleep because I was driving. I so, appreciate that. Um, and it was, it was, so here's the deal. So it was awesome. Thank you so much for that surprise. Mm -hmm. I think it was very very much needed for our relationship for yes. sure um now you then went and worked on friday you're you worked like crazy on no sleep but then you came back home and i tried to reciprocate a little bit by saying okay you go right to bed you take your two two and a half hour nap okay kind of catch up a little bit uh the next day i got up with the baby uh, you took another nap I, I tried my best to reciprocate Help me recoup from the weekend because my voice was gone i was my Actually, voice was wrong i made you take a bath on friday right yes with some bath bombs you know what i'm saying my like, feet were really because if you know me you know i ain't gonna wear comfortable shoes i oh, wear cute right, shoes okay. and Yo, that's what we do gotta be cute shoes so they were not flat i was healed up at Lollapalooza, but like like the whole time yeah and then of course at megan maroney so my feet were like bleeding yeah she's like we rub my feet i'm like why don't you go in a jacuzzi tub and put your feet next to the jets all that i do <laughs> and he won't even rub my feet do you see this but you had a nice bath i did have a nice bath okay i mean so she surprised me. It was awesome. We had an awesome night. I tried my best this past weekend to be full like recoup mode for her. Like get your mm -hmm. sleep. Let me serve you a little bit. Let me like, you know, take care of the baby more, more than I normally do um, to try to get you back to full sleep and full rest and everything. So we, you know, we're, we're good for each other, but, but thank you again for that surprise. It was really of cool. Course. I just, and I, I, I had a conversation with you and this is obviously the romance podcast and you know, we have a younger kid right now. I, we have a ten-year-old, but like a, we have a baby. Like that's and a six ten month old. seems young. Yeah, ten seems young to you, and then you have a six-month-old. You're like, oh my goodness, like that's really young. Um, so uh, it's so important to still have date nights because I felt an energy with you that I haven't got to feel in a while. Yeah. Like it was just kind of like no stress, going out. Truly focused on us. We did not talk about the kids. Like we were not really, we were talking about the well, show and different things. And and you've noticed, and you probably don't want to say it, but I'll say it, is that, you know, I personally have been in a bit of a funk because like literally right now at this stage of our, of our life, I am home with, uh, well, both kids, but like, you know, Marino, the, the, the baby, he's the more challenging one. <laughs> I mean, the other one's 10. So he well, yeah, him, you're like, Hey, go grab a snack. Yeah. Right? It's not that big. <laughs> um, but, but the way things are right now, you know, with, with our careers and stuff, I am home more. So, you know, my, my day is kind of like groundhog day. So I have, and, and, I have made no secrets on this podcast. Marino has been very difficult. So it's been like Groundhog Day. And a lot of times he's super cute and laughing and giggling. And it's a great experience. But also a lot of times he's very, very frustrating. And like, it's like, oh, so like 
I am like, and then we're turning down events and we're turning down things to, that we normally do. So it ha I'm a super positive person. I think you got a test for that. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm super optimistic, all those things. But the past couple of weeks has been kind of like, oh, you know, I kind of been in a funk, you, which normally yeah. isn't me. I've talked to you about it. I've said like, you're, you're more negative than you were before and you're this and, this, and I'm not going to like call you out totally because everyone gets in funks and that's fine. Like, it's but I normally don't. I know, but you know what? You're human. And I think you're learning some things about yourself in this stage. And like life does humble you. And it's like, you know what? It, it, hopefully it's something that has um, maybe softened your heart. Because I think that if you don't get into fun, because you don't feel that, you can see somebody else and be like, just take care of it. Just do yeah. this. What do you mean? And when you can relate to it is when you go, I know. Sometimes you just can't help but feel that way. Sometimes. So it's probably a lesson that you're going to have to utilize later. It's probably important for you to learn. But you have, you've totally been in a funk. And, mm. and it also, makes me sad. And I, by the way, one night out doesn't completely fix that, of course. But yeah, it is but helpful. I think not just the, the home life situation. The Cubs have been losing a lot. And it's like, okay. what the... <laughs> our pets heads are falling off. Our pets heads are falling off. <laughs> That's how it feels. No, but, it but, does feel but that I, I say all that because that Thursday night surprise date night was a lot of fun. We got to let loose. It was a good refresher to kind of get out and like not have the kids around and like not have any responsibilities except like to Do each other. Do you want to drink more? Yeah. Do you yeah, want yeah, yeah. another one of these? Yeah. So I only had one. I was driving. I only one, but she had a couple. Um, but yeah, so there was- I deserved it. I, I, I don't say care. I, I say all that to, to, you know, humbly say like we needed that night yeah. and it was a good refresher. And for sure. I had a conversation with you um, just a few days ago too about- we have to do better. And I know that getting babysitters is hard. It's also expensive. It's a lot of things. But we're not taking enough of advantage of what can we do when the kids are asleep and we have that babysitter. Because more yeah. people can handle that. Like kids being asleep, just come over, watch something. And it is so good for us. And mm -hmm. we realized it that night. And yeah. we need to do better about doing that for us. Because like you said, you're in a funk and stuff like that. I've been in a lot of like postpartum is a total journey on its own. Yeah. So I've been in and out of different kind of funks and different you, parts of my journey. Yeah, Breastfeeding, pumping. I don't care. I'm not going to, I'm not <laughs> playing with you right now. Okay. So <laughs> I, it's, it's a lot, right? Uh -huh. Your whole life changing, like you said, and just different aspects of it. So, um, uh, to have a little bit of normalcy and escape a little bit from that, it's just really important. And we need to prioritize it more because when you are like that and you are going through funks and you're going through up and downs, you're, you're not even the best you can be for your family. Mm -hmm. Like you are probably more irritable during the day if mm -hmm. you're in a funk than if you just feel refreshed. It's just normal, right? Yeah. Or on a lack of sleep or whatever it is. So it, it's not only good for you and for our relationship, it's good for our family when you feel refreshed and not like you're having Groundhog Day and things like that. So it is important. And sometimes by taking care of yourself, it's also the best thing you can do for your family. And yeah. that's it's easy to not think that, but like we have to be better about thinking that. And so yeah. do a lot of people. So basically we got to drink more is what you're saying. Yeah. No, I think <laughs> we need way more alcohol in the house is what I have learned. I mean, and you know, one thing we are doing, um, because we're in this weird thing where we, we do a lot of events, like we're emceeing a bunch of events. We actually should talk about them eventually. Like as we they, need to start posting those as they get closer, but like we have like three or four events that we're emceeing coming up at the end of the year. Um, we need babysitters for that. So my stance is like, I don't want to burn a babysitter on me going to Lollapalooza when we actually do need it for this event for work and that event for work. But I do want to say is that we do have a trip coming up. Uh, we are going to London to watch the Chicago Bears mm -hmm. play the Jacksonville Jaguars. That's going to be in October. It's pretty cool. I am super amped about it. And before anyone gets judgy, I'm going because of work. Yes. It is the Cuna One's like Brain and Kenzie London trip, which is amazing. And I'm bringing the hubs with. Yeah, without without the kids. I don't want them anywhere near London. Without uh, the yes. kids, yes. And my parents are coming in to handle the children. And I can't wait because it's going to be like Wednesday through Monday. Mm -hmm. That's going to be in sanity because mm -hmm. here's the thing even when i've gone away for like an evening i you have had several day and overnight breaks from the baby because i've brought the baby to like my parents house and stuff mm. that's never happened for me i've never slept without the monitor on or the, so even if i went out later for the night i come back i still hear him all night mm -hmm. or get up with him in the morning i've never gone 
an entire day length or anything like that. So five days, not right. Wednesday through that is going to be wild for me from, I'm never going to have ever done it. And then we're going to do five days. So I've never been to London before. You haven't either. Mm -hmm. Um, with my music career, I traveled the world, but it was always like China and Taiwan, Singapore. You never did Europe. Never did Europe. I always wanted to, you know, so, uh, you had to go cause of work and you're like, they're giving a really good rate for spouses. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, this is the time, right? Hey, you didn't want to go by yourself. Yeah, I didn't want to travel. Obviously, like Brian and I are going to say, like, in a room together or anything. So, and he's going with his wife. And I really, there's a lot of stuff planned each day, like, for the Kyoto One crew. So, it's going to be really, really fun. Um, It's this whole trip, this curated trip that was put together. Now, there is downtime. Of course, they don't have every minute. And I was like, I really don't want to be in a foreign country by myself. And there's things that I do want to go see. And I don't want to do that again by myself. Yeah, so it was important to me. Yeah. I, I, so I feel like, you know, some of the events that we're passing up on here in Chicago, I, we're making up for it. We're going on like a little bit of a, 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 a romance <laughs> vacation together. No kids, you know. So yes. you gotta, at this stage of our life, you got to pick and choose your battles. You know, we do get babysitters for work events that we're hosting. And they're also fun events that we're hosting. But like, and then we may miss out on these things, but we're going to London, right? So it's kind of the give and take right now of what's going on in our life. Um, the good and the bad. But like, honestly, I'm looking forward to London. I am too. Uh, we're going to go to Paris as well. Check out the Eiffel Tower, yes. right? D- during the London trip, not a separate trip. Yeah, no, we're not yeah. doing this world tour. No, no. This is like one trip. We're just yes. going and yes. uh, watching the Chicago Bears. It'd be pretty cool, man. It's going to be a lot of fun. So I know. I'm very excited. I am too. Let's close the podcast by something funny that happened today. Uh, I was driving your Jeep and I plug my phone in. So you have CarPlay. And so, and you love this, where like my texts pop up on your screen mm-hmm. anytime I get a text. So we were in like a group text. With, I forget who we were texting, but uh, we're in a group text and, and your name popped up on your Jeep screen. Mm-hmm. And what did you say about it? You have the habit. You don't realize this emoji exists, but you have Kenzie. And then the bride emoji and then Roman yeah. as my name and his phone. Very cute, right? Very sweet. Very cute. Yeah. He's chosen the male bride every time. There's a male, like a male in the white bridal dress. And you never realize that the girl one has long hair. And he did this on my say this to the dress post because he helped me put it on Kenzie and Roman while I put it on my socials. He used the like the male bride. And then now it's in his phone. And I go, could you just stop using the the guy when you're describing now, me? Listen, Kenzie gave me a big talk before we did this podcast about I need to be careful of what I say well, in response to this. Well, because this isn't supposed to be rude. It's supposed but, to just be like, but I'm not a guy personally. I don't care if here's the deal. you are a guy doing it, but I'm not one. Here's the deal. I never thought in my life, and even today... That there was a male bride emoji. I saw a bride. I clicked it because you're my bride. I put it in there. Listen, also iPhones, uh, the text and everything, kind of small. So it was a bride. It was you a bride. have gotten to the age now where you bring stuff to me and go, what is what does this description say on the back? Or how do I use this hair product? Well, that, okay, the hair product, that shit was little, man. See? I mean, you, but you even admitted it was it little. It was little, but I could read it. Yeah. But that, no way. He is not seeing any identifying characteristics. He saw white gown. That well, was I, it. Again, 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 I'm not trying to offend anybody. I never thought that there was anything but a female bride emoji. It's a bride and it's a fe- I, I didn't think that there was a male bride emoji. I guess I'm old school. I never saw that coming. Um, but apparently it's here. It's just, <laughs> and, it's, and it's under your name. I just, I, I just, I don't, I don't care. Like, th- it's fine that there is one. We're not concerned about it. Please stop using it to describe me because I, I personally was a, was a female bride. Are you still our female? Thank you. For the record. And I would like and you're going to stay a female. Well, then change the emoji. Yeah, I need to. I definitely need to. Stop I, I, doing that. I didn't know. Who knew? Who knew? <laughs> Me. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for checking out this week of uh, the Romance Podcast. I think it was a fun one because uh, you learned that, that Kenzie, her luck isn't always stellar. And apparently, like you say, I have a horse show up my ass. You right? Horse show up his ass, Roman. <laughs> and uh, we had a, gr- a really, really, really cool surprise. Love Palooza weekend. It was awesome. Thank you again for that. Mm-hmm. That was great. And I promise the second we get off here, I'm going to change the emoji to the female bride emoji. I for, appreciate it. For my wife. Because again, she is a female. I- I am a female. Oh, she's all female. Mm. Okay. All that's- right. Do not forget, you can't spell romance without Roman.